Hey, welcome to episode six of Mastering Metals. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I'm feeling so much better now. <laughs> Thank you guys for uh, allowing me to, to get better and uh, get my full strength back. Thank you. Uh, I'm so excited to really get back into the swing of things uh, with Mastering Metals. Uh, I've been looking forward to this for a while. Lots have been going on with silver and gold, so we're going to have Mukara Maju joining me in just a few minutes, or a minute. <laughs> but just uh, for those of you that are here for the first time on Mastering Metals, please put the word first in the chat, please. We've got about 100 people in here, so I know there's got to be a first-timer in there somewhere, uh, and it better not be any of my mods, because you're exposed. All right. Don't, don't put first. Just, I'm really curious. So Jimmy, the kid first, that's great. Mr. Kiwi, Brian Pearson. Uh, let's see. ATM, Luana V, uh, Damien, first time, Ed, first time, Venomous Cosmics, Robert, Nick, Michael, Jay Carter, Luden, Gary. We got quite a few. The Dante Wolf. This is good. Good. All right. So for you first timers, this right here is a little bit different than what I usually do on my Ask Yankee live streams. This is a, a master class in, in investing and even trading silver and gold. And I have an expert that joins me. He is a wonderful friend and colleague, Mukar Majud. He's the head of trading at Bullionite. He's the chief investment officer at Blackstone Commodity Group. By the way, that's not related to the BlackRock, okay? So it's Blackstone Commodity Group, and he is uh, an expert at metals. He loves gold and silver, and he's going to help me really help you become a master at it. So let's, uh, let's say hi to Mukaram and bring him in. There he is. Hey, Mukaram. Good to Hi, see Yankee. you. <laughs> How are you? Happy New Year. Uh, Happy New Year to you. I'm feeling really good now, so it's it's nice to uh, to be 100% with you. Looking forward to this tonight. Appreciate it. <laughs> Start off the year with a bang. Right? Yes, what yes. Everything's going on. Uh, so this live stream is for all my uh, subscribers to watch and learn. If you're part of my Yankee militia, okay, you can participate uh, in the Q&A portion of this live stream at the end. Uh, we have three segments, don't we, Mukaram, to our uh, Mastering Metals. The first is Markets and Macro. The second is Retirement Insights. And then there's that Q&A section at the very end. That's a fun, fun time. You, you get asked all kinds of crazy questions, and some of them really, uh, I learn a lot when people in the chat ask questions. So I love that portion of it. Yeah. And if you, that's why if you see me kind of <laughs> glancing at the other screen, that's right. because I'm trying to see what their questions that's are. Right. Okay. So think, so think of your questions actually though, it is for members right. only, right? So, uh, Patriot pistol, me Patriot pistol members, <laughs> Yankee cannon members and Buffalo bullet members can ask questions in the chat. So just, uh, consider a membership. And just even if you're not, just listen. You're going to learn a lot uh, tonight. So, um, you know, a lot has been going on, Mukarm. I think we should probably dive into our first segment right away, markets and macro. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot yeah, of, I think, a lot of yeah. changes in the price of gold and silver. Talk to us about what's gone on in the last, since the last time we talked. A lot of changes, but nothing that makes us think, that anything's different, right? Okay. Um, sometimes people make a big deal out of a $50 drop or a couple dollar drop in silver, but mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that. Yep. But I think the biggest thing that's happened since we had our last Mastering Medals session, and we talked about this, that's what's nice about the Yankee show, right? There's always, we talk about things and then suddenly you see it kind of coming into fruition, okay? And we did say this, hey, I think going into the last meeting of the year, the Fed will not raise interest rates. Yes, they will did. pause. Yep. We did. We said that. 
Um, and some of the, you know, the options markets were showing that they actually thought they may raise it one more time, but we said, hey, we really believe that they'll pause, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And not only did they pause, but the big surprise in that meeting, and we talked about the Fed meetings where we always want to gauge what the Fed says instead of what, like what they do in for the future, like meaning the Fed speak, right? That's what we call Fed speak. Right. And the big surprise was when Powell came out and pretty much laid out a plan for cutting interest rates, okay? That's a big deal. That's a big, big deal because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 16 months of, I believe, failed interest rate hikes, you know, for the economy, um, too quick for them to talk about cutting rates. But even that, we could see it because it's an election year coming up, right? Yeah. We talked about that a couple of Yankee shows ago where we said, hey, they're going to begin the pivot, okay? Mm -hmm. So we've we've been at the pause and now the pivot's coming. And we talked about how to trade the pause, where we built, we believed markets will go higher. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the stock market, take advantage of any time when the market goes up, selling up, right? Oh, I remember that clearly, yeah, yes. And we've, we've been doing it right. successfully for a lot of the audience members and, and, and a lot of individuals who really want to take advantage and take control of their destiny. But the net, so remember this, this is a major shift in policy. In, in, in what they've communicated over the last year and a half when they talk about cutting rates. So that was one of the big reasons why we had certain commodities go up significantly in December. Mm -hmm. Now, the comedy show is going to happen, okay? <laughs> and I'm going to explain what that means. Every time you get a set of data points, like, for example, the non-farm payroll number, which comes out the first Friday of every month at 8.30 a.m., Eastern Standard Time or 5.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we folks who live in the Pacific Standard Time, we are up early for, for reports like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, every time a, an economic report comes out, and if it's slightly positive or slightly feel good, the entire street's going to overreact and mm -hmm. say, oh, the Fed's not going to cut rates mm -hmm. because of this gold will drop $20, mm -hmm. $30, silver will drop a couple dollars. <laughs> Guess what? The intelligent community, the community that's learning to trade through this show and all of the people that are benefiting, take advantage of that comedy show, okay? <laughs> because every time that happens, you have to know behind the scenes, you got to know what you own, you know, when it comes to gold. Mm -hmm. I always say this when, when I uh, train individuals to trade or investing, you have to know what you own because don't let a set of economic reports or me the media convince you to get out of something because they they make you lose your patience right you don't want it you want to be paid you get yeah, you get you paid patient. to wait yep. Yep. in trading right you get paid to wait so that's the biggest thing that i'm because for example the non farm payroll number that came out you know last friday was more positive than ex than the street yep, expect it beat expectations. because of that yep. suddenly everything started coming down mm -hmm. all that. but that doesn't change the fact that the fed wants to cut rates therefore individuals who are listening to this show should understand if you're going into a year that they have pretty much forecasted that they're going to cut rates get ready by positioning yourself in assets that are inversely correlated to the dollar mm. because you will see a significant appreciation of your net worth if you do that they're going to cut I think they need to. I think they've gotten altitude last year in a rapid, rapid rise. And at this point, they're prepping for cuts. You know, it's interesting. I, I dropped a video earlier uh, today. Uh, it's called Five Dire Reasons to Stack Silver and Gold in 2024. Um, and one of the things that I talked about, actually it was number five, was the historically... Uh, you know, compelling relationship, not between inflation and gold, but between the inflation indexed or inflation adjusted interest rates. Actually, mm -hmm. I want to show a chart here really quick of, of this. So we got the gold price and it's, uh, you know, versus the inflation adjusted market yield of 10 year constant maturity U.S. Treasury. In other words, 
that is uh, interest rates, right, for the 10-year treasury. And the gold price is what you see in gold, and that dashed line is, is rates. So as rates, inflation adjusted or inflation indexed rates go down, gold goes up. The dollar goes down, gold goes up. And the other direction is rates, uh, real rates, real. This is real inflation adjusted rates. Not the stuff you see, you know, in the paper, but adjusted for inflation. As that increases, gold price goes down. If, if this is what we're going to be seeing in 2024, rate cuts with inflation at where they're at now or maybe higher, but not going to come down too much more. I mean, we're, we've kind of stabilized with our inflation. If rates keep getting cut, this is going to bolster the price of gold. Don't you agree? Yeah, I mean, it's a very, you know, sometimes I say this, when it comes to making significant amounts of money in the markets, usually the trade is a very simple trade, okay? It's not a complicated trade. Right. Um, and in this case, that's what's been setting up all of last year, right? The, mm. Pretty much that's what we've been saying. It's a very simple trade. It's just that the execution is complicated and some people just don't understand when to move, when, you know, how mm -hmm. much to move, right? They have the fear. So that education helps you get over that fear and then take control of it. So in reality, the simple trade here is to understand, number one, no matter what happens, if the central bank of a country, especially the most powerful country in the world, the United States, right? If we decide to cut interest rates, mm -hmm. the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to reduce or decrease the value of the dollar. Yes. Because that's the local currency of the country. Right. That's just econ 101, right? right. Um, you in decrease interest rates, mm -hmm. especially after 16 months or year and a half of raising interest rates at the most aggressive rate we've raised it. Mm -hmm. By the way, gold just refused to come down. Isn't that amazing? Okay. Just refused to come just down. Think about that with all that they did. It it was unprecedented, the speed yeah. by which they raised rates. And what did gold do? Stayed it, close it to It hung in there. And now, if, am I wrong in thinking there? Kind of, and you're going to get into this, I'm sure, with your charts. But do you feel like there's this, there's this base, really a strong base being formed at around 2000? Yeah, I mean, a couple of things. I think people are not paying attention to this. Because it's good that you brought that up. Okay. But I, I may so, be getting out of order. I apologize if you that's okay. Want to bring that's okay. That's what that's what makes the show fun, <laughs> right? Okay, so let's just talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Everyone's concerned right now about obviously the geopolitical concerns in the Middle East. Can that you know intensify? Which I believe there's many opportunities for that. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing is okay. about the interest rates. And, and I noticed just by glancing in the chat screen where some people are saying, will it be two interest rate cuts or three interest rate cuts? Really doesn't matter, guys, because the moment they cut rates, the entire the entire picture changes. OK, wow. because we right now for the last year and a half or so, a lot of people have latent trauma of being in a market that you've had unprecedented interest rate hikes. Mm -hmm. And because of that. Everything is looked at through a prism of, oh, well, will the market just drop immediately or the profits won't hold? Here's a big difference. A lot of people, when you have that latent trauma, and you guys know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you're in a trade, it goes up 15 minutes, later you come back and you've lost all your profits, right? Or you're in silver, silver goes from $20 to $26, comes back down to 20. That's trauma, okay? That's trauma. For it's a not trader, a for a trader. A yeah, stacker, trader, yeah, maybe not so much. Well, <laughs> even for stackers, because okay. now you don't know like the trend. But okay. here's yes. what we're coming yes. into. We're now coming into, and this is the secret, okay? We're now coming into a market or markets mm -hmm. that will begin to trend. And mm -hmm. playing the trend is very different to playing a um, two-year-old erratic behavior kind of child market, childish market. That's what we had for the last year and a half, right? A childish so, market. Yeah, we did. It, we had a pretty much a boisterous two-year-old uh, kind of market, right? Like acting up all the time and kept having issues where you it didn't follow normal mathematical principles. So you had to expand yourself and you have to have a lot of experience when you're trading that. That's why, you know, when we talk to some of our, some of the clients that come from the show, 
<laughs> we've educated them why it makes sense to take out a certain percentage or sometimes why it take why it makes sense to take out that much more from the stock market move it into metals because you're building a position that can go mm. up significantly when it becomes trending so let me go back to that right okay when a market begins to trend yankee you have to trade it and invest in it very differently. You need to understand how to hold on to a position. Hit that do not disturb light, right? Put that seatbelt on and go, I'm not going to get out of this too early. I'm not going to um, you know, move, move money out of it for no reason because you have done the hard work, the homework. All of last year, you did that. you know, uh, and, and we still may have about a quarter or so left of this year to do that, right? After that, you will see this acceleration phase coming. So number one, understand we're now going from an erratic two-year-old child behaving market to some major markets like commodities, crude, gold, all of them beginning to trend, okay? When that trend happens, here's one of the secrets to a trending market. Certain whole numbers that, that cannot be held begin to be held. Okay, I'll give you an example. Explain that, yeah. Go back to 2008, uh -huh. 2009. Gold just refused to hold $1,000. Refused to hold $1,000. It'll go from $600 to $1,030. Come back down, $800 to $1,000. So it refused to hold $1,000. Then suddenly, it started to hold that whole number. And then it began to trend. And then within a year or year and a half, we're at $1,900, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's that. Now, everyone- That was I a remember... ride. That was when I bought my Yankee Cannon. <laughs> it was at 1,000, right? And it was, it was it was really hard to have that hold for any period of time. And then all of a sudden, we left it behind, never looked back. And a lot of people who had the latent trauma mm -hmm. of not understanding that or going through that volatility would get out at 1,300, would get out mm -hmm. at 1,400. Whereas we would be like, hey, this is a trending market. We're going to build a massive position and hold on to it, right? right? So now, guess what's happening? For the last year or year and a half, gold has struggled to stay over $2,000, right? Struggled, struggled. Uh -huh. Any, like you, it would try as much as it can. Go to 2100, boom. You won't expect it. It came, comes down to 1750, yep. goes back to 2000 plus, comes down to 1800. But now... Slowly, after the Fed meeting, gold is beginning to get comfortable over $2,000, right? I'm not saying it may not come down a little lower, right? but the longer it stays over $2,000 and builds that base, that psychological mm -hmm. base at that major whole number, mm -hmm. you will get ready for twenty five and twenty seven and and $3,000, okay? Yeah. Especially if you have more rate cuts that support that move i you know I, I, there's an old saying i remember just kind of dates me but the was it um ef hutton no it, i forget what it was but it was buy cautiously or carefully buy carefully sell reluctantly i love how you said you know put that do not disturb to the, the you know pause and we as stackers love to accumulate right we're constantly looking for entry points uh People are saying in the chat, you know, I just hope this does actually come down, silver and gold, so that I can buy more. Because, again, we're focused on that accumulation because we're looking long-term. We have a long-term mindset. but And that's good. I mean, that's something that a lot of the uh, retirement uh, clients that you have uh, through Mastering Metals love to do that. They have that time horizon. They're really looking long-term. But also from a trading standpoint, you you do th you do this a lot better than I do, right? So you you know when to not only get in, you look for with your algorithms the right time to get out. Again, you're trying to trade it as well as uh, you know accumulate it, right? Yeah, and build what I believe is you're going into a commodity super cycle. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. don't let anyone tell you, uh, you know otherwise, right? You mm -hmm. are going into a commodity super cycle. And you will see major commodities like wheat and corn, gold, yeah. silver, crude oil. All I've of been, these things begin to go up significantly. I've been pushing this, you know, for a couple of years now. 
ahead of what I believe is what you're saying. This is the accumulation phase for commodities. This is why I get into all those different things. I think I mentioned it last time uh, when we had Mastering Metals episode five. I talked about the different things that I buy, not just gold and silver, but commodities, real tangible assets, things that you you need, core stuff, not the the high flying tech stocks and and the you know the, the the small amount of stocks that really drive the markets. No, real commodities, and, and I think you're right. I think we're going to be headed into that. In this decade, we're going to see a dramatic rise like we did back, you know, 2008, 2009, 2010. Yeah. And also keep in mind, it's not going to be a direct like no. elevator. No. Right. It never goes straight step up, up for a long time. <laughs> five steps up, two right. steps down. Yeah. And sometimes within those five steps up, there will be some major kind of whole numbers or areas that it needs to consolidate. Right. And then that's OK. But here's another thing that happens when you come out of this latent trauma and then you begin to go into a trending market. Right. Mm -hmm. Here's another thing that happens. A lot of people wish they will say, oh, I wish it pulled back and I, I'll buy it when it pulls right. back. <laughs> oh, I wish it pulls back. I'll buy it. But then when it pulls back, they won't buy it because they have that latent trauma is, that tells them, oh, it can exactly. keep going lower. They, they claim to be contrarian investors, but when they get their buy opportunity, they go, oh, oh, I don't know. Yeah, like they're trying. That's because <laughs> they don't have the confidence to uh, find the next winner, right? Mm -hmm. This is why when I, whenever I teach this to clients, I always let them know, hey, there are two reasons that people don't get out of an investment in profit. Or they don't get in into a different investment or move a significant amount from one investment to another is because they don't have a system or the math or they don't have the confidence that they can get out of this profitable trade and then find another profitable trade, right? Or another profitable investment opportunity. That's where we can help you because as a tribe, right, with you and us and all of us working together, mm -hmm. we can give you the confidence to understand, hey, there are times you should move only 10 or 20 percent. There are times you should move a significant portion more than that mm -hmm. from one asset class to another because it could be one of those time periods in a 10 year cycle where you could make a significant amount in a shorter period of time. You know, if you move the right amount of money rather than just moving a five or a 10 percent allocation into something, because then you will not that you will not get that opportunity again, maybe for another decade. Right. Because that's an important thing to keep in mind. Yeah. I want to touch on that when we get into our retirement insight uh, and, and what you've done. I mean, I just I just had an email uh, back and forth with someone that from our last uh, Mastering Metals reached out to you and talked to you about his particular circumstance. And it was really encouraging to be able to actually hear, you know, having that dialogue with you. I asked him, how did it go? What was it like? And he asked me some questions from it because I'll tell you, Mukar, they, they, they know you, they love you, but they do want to hear my take on it, which was amazing. And I gave him my take. And it's nice to hear that. Uh, I'm not surprised that it went really well for him, but we'll get to that before yeah, we do. Okay. You touched sure. on, I want two things. One, the geopolitical impacts. Mm. I, I I want you to spend in maybe another two three minutes on that because that could be a real black swan event here for us, and and we'll see what happens, especially in an election year. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of the whole tail wagging the dog here, but um, but I do need to understand a little bit more what transpired with gold and silver. So this is where I'm gonna want to see your charts. So those are the two things, and then we'll get to the retirement stuff. How does that sound? Great. We can now. Uh... It's actually, right. and you can use the geopolitical with the charts. I don't care how you do it. You 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 yeah. take over, man. <laughs> I think we'll talk about the geopolitical like kind of one on one because I want people to understand okay. this very clearly, especially this year, mm. because there's a lot of things going on, right? Some of them are just, uh, you know, they, it's just extended, right? Or they'll change a little bit. So when it comes to geopolitical, um situations, there are some things that are very important to kind of understand. One, I'm just coming from a, a trip to the Middle East and Asia, 
Okay. Um, and I did that simply because of what's going on. And I wanted to kind of get an idea of, hey, how do we prepare for this? So it was like, wow. I just landed a couple of days ago and I was like, okay. And then Chris, and then we had our schedule, uh, like the show scheduled. I was like, I st oh, okay, I'm going to do the show because I think it's that important. You Were you so, in the office today? Yeah. I mean, I had to come into the office just for this. Really much yeah for the show that's it you know because <laughs> I, I, mean, I was jet lagged and traveling oh, different man. continents and things like that but if it was for a reason you know mm -hmm. we wanted to understand what a couple of things mm -hmm. what's the sentiment out there you know because a lot of people unfortunately are blaming the united states for everything that's going on in the middle east right now right so we want to get the sentiment wow. out there like what, how bad is it? Is it real? Mm -hmm. um, secondly, when it comes to investing, because a lot of, you know, international clients invest in the U.S., a lot of money comes in, that helps our economy, right? Um, and it helps kind of the growth, all that. And I'm just, and trying to figure out, will that be affected? You know, will there was a survey recently conducted, uh, I think last week or so, with uh, in, in Saudi Arabia, where 1,000 Saudi nationals were asked, you know, whether what's going on in Israel and, will you know, should they normalize relations? Right now, all of them are saying no, right? Because mm -hmm. of, of sometimes maybe a misconception of what's going on, a misunderstanding of what's happening. But here's the big thing that I'm noticing. Um, a lot of people are worried about the, the, um, the, the, in, in the free way that Israel feels like they can go into Lebanon and do something there, okay? We've already seen that a couple times the last couple of weeks, right? I know it's been, it's been something that's discussed over and over again. We've also had our Secretary of State, right, stop by kind of similar countries, yes. you know? Uh, he's Ancient. in the Middle East yeah. right now. Yeah. He was in Saudi Arabia. He was in Qatar. He mm. was in, I think, the United Arab Emirates as well. Um and they're all talking about, okay, what's going to happen when this war kind of de-escalates? But I think the issue is Israel's talking more about, well, maybe it might de-escalate in Gaza, mm. but we might want to escalate it across the border. Now, that's a major thing. In Lebanon. Yeah, I mean, they've already done a couple, you know, strikes there. Obviously, yep. no, in response I, to strikes that they're having, I mean, that's yeah. just the country's right to defend itself. But as traders and as investors, we want to pay attention to that because mm -hmm. this particular situation in Palestine, like we talked about a couple of shows ago, what we said was, hey, in the beginning, it's going to be messy. But after that, the major effect of it would come if it expands into the region, right? Syria, oh, yeah. Lebanon, what happens with Yemen. So keep that in mind, even though a lot of people are talking about Taiwan and China, I think this takes more, uh, like this comes in before anything else because of the fact that we are already seeing a breach of of, of international uh, borders, right? Yep. Um, yep. And so keep yep. that in mind. Yep. Yeah, I touched on this a little bit again in my video uh, today, I talked about China. And just, to, you know, we don't know. We don't know what he's going to do. But when when he had his uh, New Year's announcement, he talked about the reunification of Taiwan. He said, it's going to happen. The timing, when? When is that going to happen? And what will our response be? I mean, if it was this year, on an election year, and in the way we're, we're distracted, who knows, um, from a weather window, it would be May and June. That would be horrible. It, it just seems like there is a lot of potential uh, real confl conflagration, uh, you know, going to the next level in 2024. And it's sort of like I said, uh, you know, it's a black swan. We don't know when and if something like that would be. And, you know, 2022, I made the mistake of thinking that the Russian invasion into the Ukraine was going to last well, six, eight months, and then there'd be some negotiation. And boy, was I wrong. Yeah. I mean, wow, we this about thing. That, right? And we've been sucked into it. Yeah, we talked about it. We have. And it's just bad. So that's a whole aspect to the price of gold and silver that could be huge. Do you see that? Lasting, if something like that happened uh, with China or Israel continues to escalate or Russia goes to the next level, which could be non-conventional, it could definitely be something bad. Do do we 
Do we see gold respond and then not come back? In other words, does that just change the order of magnitude of what we think the gold and silver prices are going forward? I think this is a re that's a great question because within that question, we can educate a lot of the viewers on how to play the markets in a way that you can get an edge, okay? Mm -hmm. So here's a rule. No matter what happens, whether geopolitical reasons, political reasons, mm -hmm. supply demand concerns, whatever happens, if they always happen in phases, okay? They never happen like with one instance and it's over. There's always phases. But keep this in mind, at every phase or at every, um, every inflection point, right? What you'll notice is there will be a significant spike in markets that respond to those fundamental triggers. But what you have to understand is never not take profits when you have a significant <laughs> spike in those markets. Yeah. This is the reason why we have worked so diligently and tirelessly over the last year and a half building positions in commodities, especially physical metals, physical gold, physical silver, because our plan, especially for our clients and people who have moved money from the stock market, mm -hmm. you know, protected themselves from losing money significantly and then building this position, is when we see these events unfold, and when they unfold in phases, we will then take profits on those major spikes. Mm. Because we are not going to play the game of saying, okay, now gold's gonna stay up and it's gonna keep going to $10,000 an ounce. <laughs> We're not gonna do that. Okay. Because if you have a million dollar account and now you've gone to 1.5 or 1.8 because of your hard work and, and the intelligence of building that position before something happens, and I and, want to make sure and I, listening I, to you, pardon? <laughs> and listening to you, hard well, work, intelligence, God willing, and getting everyone your, working getting and, your and, and watching your show and yeah. coming together, right, as yeah. a tribe. Yeah. Um, you want to take that because here are two rules. Number one, whenever you make money that is significantly more than what normal sounds to you when it comes to money, mm. you got to take it. Okay. Like, let's say if you make $500,000 in a trade, you want to take that if you made that within like a few, few months or a year or so, right? What, and, and here's why I'm saying this. It all comes down to the individuals, because if you're just a hardworking individual who's thinking of retiring at 65 or, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a little earlier or maybe a little later, that's a lot of money. Now, if you're a hedge fund or a trader or a group of who are used to this, now if you make a million dollars in a day, that's that's different, right? But what I'm talking about is if you work for 30 years and you don't want to lose a significant portion of your retirement because of nonsensical government policies or fiscal policies from central banks. <laughs> Runaway central banks and crazy fiscal governments. Yeah, it's true. Fiscal policies. Fiscal policies. And you ha you've had the you know, the um, the hindsight to prepare for that and you've worked with a team, then mm. you want to take profits on, on these major spikes. So if you have these geopolitical uh, events unfold, what we'll be doing is we're going to look for these major spikes. I think you'll see significant spikes. And at those points, we will. that's where we all come together and we'll help you. Yeah, I, this that reminds me of a question I was going to ask you about some newer clients that have connected up with you through Mastering Metals. You've helped them establish a position, a beachhead in their retirement. We're going to get to retirement, but you've helped them. You, you, you like to pull the trigger at the right time with them, right? You, so you don't necessarily, sometimes you told them we're, we're, we're going to wait. We're going to wait just a yeah, little I bit. Mean, you want to get in in a good, have you been like turning them on? Have you in the last few weeks? I, I'm just curious how you've been buying at this point. You well, know, we last, like to see the last few weeks. Go ahead. I think to make it, Let's say we generalize this. Okay. And I, and I think we said this about a couple sessions ago and then last session as well. We are no longer looking at gold and silver as having bear market corrections. It's over. We are no longer looking at it that way, okay. right? Because we believe, we believe we are transitioning from a sideways erratic market to a trending market with fundamentals, major fundamentals that will support 
an uptrending market. Okay. Mm -hmm. So because of that, any dip, whether it's $20, $50, $60, is a buy. You're buying. Sometimes if you have a trend and then you feel like it's gone up $20 the next day, you're still going to buy it. Okay. So because this, we're not yeah. worried about a $100, $200 drop. Right. You know? This is important because, you know, when you hear me I, as a stacker, I, I usually say buy. If it's down, buy. If it's going up, buy. Buy, 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 buy. You're not, you're a seller of metals too. You you take your profits. Yeah. You're a trader and a stacker, but you also look at this in a, in a buy-sell perspective. So it's, you know, this is important because people listening are going, oh, of course, he's a metals guy. He's going to say buy gold and silver all the time forever and ever, and that's it, right? That's no. not true for you. So that's you really see a difference right now. This There's is two ways we trade metals, right? Significant we trade. trade metals, exchange. which is gold and silver. Mm -hmm. We also trade futures contracts in gold and silver, like for ourselves. We okay. don't trade that for clients. <laughs> so there's a different approach when we trade futures contracts. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a different different approach when you have the physical metal, right? Right. Especially if the physical metals are in an IRA, there's a there's an approach to that that's very different to a futures, uh, gold futures trade or a silver futures trade, which we no. don't do for clients, okay? okay? Which is what our background is from it's futures trading. Stuff. That's all of our proprietary <laughs> trading for our our love of the markets and, and and the grace that the markets gives us through God. Okay. Okay. Um, now, the important thing to understand there is there there's no chiseled in stone way of buying metals because if you do it that way, you're not going to be listening to the market. You always have to listen to the market because the market will always be right. You can be wrong. I can be wrong. Clients can be wrong, but the market's never going to be wrong. I'm going to start calling you, you the gold whisperer. I'm going to start calling you the gold whisperer. Gold whisperer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening. Listening. To you have to listen to the markets oh. because you have to be. You have to put your arrogance aside, uh -huh. and you have to humble humble yourself and say, "Hey, the market is a a millions of people." Mm -hmm. trading mm -hmm. and the price action is going to reflect and communicate to you what it wants to do mm -hmm. and your job is to listen to that and right now one of the whispers because you use the word gold whisperer right one of the whispers that the market is saying is hey like for the for the gold market it's saying hey i am comfortable being over two thousand dollars i am comfortable being over two thousand dollars so don't be afraid of me you get it? Yeah. It's, it's saying, don't be what, afraid of me. What's Silver telling you? Okay. Silver's Silver saying it's not ready yet. Okay? <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's not ready yet because it's in that accumulation phase, uh, which is normal because when gold gets comfortable over $1,000 an ounce, sorry, not when, when it was, when it got comfortable over $1,000 an ounce hmm. between October 2008 and March 2009 or so, um, then at that time, silver was uncomfortable between $16 and $19. It was still acting like a two-year-old child, which is fine because silver all silver always acts like a two-year-old yeah, child. Yeah, this just... is a lot harder to listen to. I saw that in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why it's it's not a big deal. You just want to make sure that gold gets going mm -hmm. because it's the horse that pulls the carriage. Mm. And then once it gets going, then you load up on silver and then you take advantage of that catapult effect load. and that leverage defect that you'll I've get. I've been right? loading that's up fun. on silver. All right. So we... <laughs> let's... Um, let's... Oh, man, we're not quite ready to talk IRA, 401k, retirement. Show me what has happened. This is okay. this is it. Bring it up, man. I, I want to see the charts. Educate me, man. Educate you. Okay. <laughs> this time, hopefully, the technical stuff is figured out. We don't oh, have yeah. any Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got Let's it all figured, figured out. out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. There we go. Okay. First, Yankee, tell me if you can see the chart. I sure can. Okay. Perfect. Um, and we are in a, on a gold chart right now. And gold I think features. the annotation is figured out today as well. So we shouldn't have a problem there. Okay. So mm -hmm. first, let's just go back. And this is why I, I want physical metals purchases, especially not to panic. Okay. We've had a nice run where we were at around just underneath 2000, maybe 1950 or so, a little over 1950. We've had a nice big run, right? Mm -hmm. To about 2100. Okay. And this was around just before the end of the year, right? Now, most of this rally was fueled by the Fed 
coming and, and pretty much coming out and saying, hey, we're done raising rates. We're going to start cutting rates. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the comedy show started right here towards the end of the year. A couple reasons. One, and I can um, keep this in mind. Usually, if a market goes up towards the last two weeks of the year or maybe the whole entire month of December, there'll be some balancing of the books, okay? Some window dressing and all that for the brokerage firms mm -hmm. and all of them to look good, right? <laughs> you're going to take profit. Year, you're going to move yep. money around. That's Taxes, just normal. Everything, so right. don't yep. get affected by this drop because it's just doing, you know, it's acting in a low volume season. Like, for example, professional traders like us will always say, hey, just go on a trip in the last two weeks in December, you know? And even the first week of January, don't get serious. Wait for the sec, like wait for the Monday after because that's when all the volume and the serious people come back, right? Not the ones who just want to like try to show their egos off and things like that. So the low volume sell off, not a big deal, okay? The other thing is then you got the Friday non-farm payroll number. That came out, right? Can you zoom and in that, that caused? Can you, can you that, zoom in on that last the, the section that you're talking about here, end of year? Is that yeah, a, can me, you make that a little bit uh, bigger? It's hard. I want to make sure. Um, I, I'm just sensitive to the people watching right now on their little phones. <laughs> let me annotate. Uh, let me zoom in first, and then I'll annotate it. There oh. you go. I'll clear. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you had already annotated. All right, you're pretty quick at annotating. It's okay. I can. I <laughs> that can makes it so much easier for me to see. <laughs> Hold on, I'll do this. I'll go back here. I'll clear my drawings. There you go. Okay. Cool. Now, um, hey, I'm getting good at this. Okay. The new update, something, whatever is working. <laughs> okay. All right. So here you go. There's that big run, which is a fundamentally correct price action. Remember, guys, I'm not saying it's because I think so or you think so. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it's a fundamentally correct price action. Why? Because the Fed came out right here and said, you know what? We're done cutting rates, just like the Yankee show said a month before, mm -hmm. right? And then we might cut rates for three, maybe even three times next year, which I don't really care about the number, okay? And because of that, you got an asset that's priced in dollars, started moving higher because expecting the dollar to go lower over time, right? So it's showing you, it's letting you know, hey, I want to go up. I want to go up. So don't worry, don't be afraid, don't be fearful of me, right? That's what the market's telling. After that, when we had this drop, this was the towards the last few days of the year, which mm -hmm. is what I call the low volume drops or in or you know, balance sheet dressing or window dressing or whatever it is you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And then you had this big drop right yeah, here. That's because that. of the non-farm payroll number. Okay. Yep. Which is okay because that's the comedy show I'm getting everyone ready for. Okay. <laughs> Because whenever you see the um, whenever you see movements mm -hmm. based on an economic report, based on a quick news item, when you know the road that it's being built on is you're going to cut rates, don't worry about the potholes that come up. Okay, yep. don't worry about it because the roads being built on the fact that all of this year there's going to be some kind of rate cut. So be ready. Take advantage of that. So that's that's one of the reasons. So I'm not concerned about that. The other thing is, um, let's go back to the chart, okay? Um, and then get ready for silver because I'm, I'm going to want to yeah. see that too. I know. You'll never let me go without I never. I know. I, I will must. do it. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay. So well, let's go back to annotation here. Um, the next thing that I see here is obviously there are some moving averages, right? I mean, usually the 50-day moving average is here, the 200-day moving average is here. I really think what you're going to see is you may not even attempt that because one, and this is this is the art of trading, okay? Mm -hmm. um, this is where you just have to know, like your like you have to be zen and you got to know what it's talking to you about the the whisper part, okay? So one, I think this is forming a higher low right there, okay? Uh, this was the previous uh, low, yeah. higher low. The previous time, it settled over the 50-day and the 200, and right? 200, yeah. This yeah. time, it'll show you consistency in that. Yeah. And the more consistency you see that, let's say if it settles without breaching either, mm -hmm. right? If it starts settling, it's going to give you a sign saying, hey, put a few million in here. <laughs> Right? Because you're ready because I'm ready, right? right? But that's what you have to understand about this. So that's 
that's actually very constructive. Mm. After a big run, got overbought, mm. low volume selling, then comedy show over here, <laughs> and then you got moving yeah. averages. Um, let's erase that for a minute mm -hmm. and then go on to the weekly chart because this is an important daily. one. That's daily we're looking yeah, at. Yeah, this was a yeah. daily, mm -hmm. right? So let's mm -hmm. go to the weekly chart. And on the weekly, we're seeing something interesting as well. Yeah, it's getting a really nice support after a big run. And here's what I want to uh, pay attention to here. Um, let me see if I can do the annotation again. The big run that happened in October of last year. This is what let us know. Mm -hmm. And I think I did a show after that with you mm -hmm. where I came mm -hmm. and said, hey, yes, I think we're done with the bear market issues, bear market worries with gold. That's because if you notice this, this is a weekly, by the way, guys, right? And this exactly at its 200 week moving average, Look at that. it stopped. Now, if you tell me that markets are not math oriented, is now, that intraday? <laughs> was that intraday? Hit? That's interweek. That's week. interweek. Interweek. Yeah. I'm sorry. It interweek. Touched it touched it. Wow, look at that. And then form this hammer candle. That's what yep. we call a hammer. Yep. Then the next week's candle. So this is a week, by the way. Okay, mm -hmm. it's not a day. This is an entire week's worth of trading. Mm. The next week, what's very very interesting is not only did it take out the previous week's high. Um, it didn't even go towards the low, right? That's a big deal. Usually when it kind of gets in the middle and then has this big, what we call an engulfing candle, that's a big, big sign that the 200 week is the, is the major support and the building area, not for small money, but for the big, big money. money, okay? <laughs> I don't now, know if anybody in the very... chat has the big money, but yeah, we kind of like follow the, the big, big money. Right? money. Yeah. This is the money that said, hey, I think we know the Fed's going to stop raising rates. This is the money mm -hmm. that understands before things happen, they get information in different ways where they understand how to position themselves. And that candle shows you, and this is why I always tell my clients, follow the smart money, but don't follow what they say on, the, on, on CNBC or Bloomberg or interviews or guru interviews. Follow what they do with the money. And they go, Mukarm, how do I know that? Well, very easy. Look at the price action. Yeah. Okay. And that price action showed us that the 200 week had a massive, massive buying, mm. big, massive buying, follow through buying. Since then, here's how we know it also. It went and created a new high, right? So I'm going to bring that uh, chart back just so that you can see that uh, because that's important. Um, you see how we had this low at the 200? Yes. And then we had this big engulfing candle. Remember, this yep. is weekly, guys. Yep. Then after that, it kept going, kept going, kept going, new high. Mm hmm Right? 2,120 plus. Okay? Uh -huh. That's a new one. So that tells you that the big money knows something. Mm. And what I do for our clients is we follow this and then we say, hey, even if you have 100 grand, it doesn't mean you need to be out of the big monies, you know, at, like the advantage of that, right? So we can help you by following this, whether you have a million dollars, $5 million or 100 grand, you can follow this if you know where to look. So train your eyes, guys. All right. train. Silver, and then we talk um, retirement Fast. insights. I'm Show sorry. Me the silver. I'm serious. I know. You know me, I, I yeah, yes. I'm we going. do not move on <laughs> until we see silver. Do not move on until we see silver. I got it. I will. I'm just make sitting here playing with this uh, these eagles here. Yeah, oh, um, I have a question about eagles. Later yeah. on, so so we'll get to that too when we talk about there IRAs. Go. I love the zooming in that we did at the chart. Okay, I like it. Yeah, it that helps. That helped me. I don't know about others, but <laughs> I got to do that again. I, I think it's like 80 percent are watching on their phone, so okay. <laughs> it's got to be sensitive so, no, to that. Um, let me just bring up the annotation again. Hold on. Um, did I mess up your camera? No, you're angle? good. All you need to do is share it. Yep. No, you're okay, fine. You're fine. I don't know the Hollywood stuff, you know. So I'm not the good stuff. Uh, all right, so here we go. <laughs> good. Silver. Um, From the same time yeah. frame, right? Are we looking at same daily? Same time frame. All right. See this mm. big candle mm -hmm. right after the Fed said, hey, we're done. Big move up, right? For silver, that's a big move, guys. It goes from $22 to yeah. almost 25 That's that a big move. was, and then move. 20%, right? Yep. It's a big move. 
After that, you know, silver is more volatile than gold and silver is usually less volume than gold. So if you go into the last few days of the year, you should be on vacation somewhere. <laughs> and you should not be trading silver during the last few days of the year. Okay. Especially if you're in a cold state, fly, go somewhere. Well, people are buying it up for Christmas, right? And then well, afterwards, it's like, yeah, you know, the end of the, the year, people. Traders, low volume starts hitting, <laughs> normal stuff, right? If it, if it goes up significantly yeah. in that month get sold, not worried at all. Yeah. Then you have the non-farm payroll number and it's just going to accelerate. That, that oh, There's going to be stop losses that get triggered oh, that was yeah. put towards the end of the year. All bad ideas, guys. This is why I say, if you, if you save some money and you've made good money for the year in trading or investing, go for a vacation, okay? Don't trade in the last two weeks of the year. That's something. Now, here's what's interesting to me. If you look at the last few days, this is... Let's break this down a little bit. And I know people are not going to like the technical stuff here. So I'm going to try to keep uh -oh. this as 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 not, not as complicated at all. Okay. I'm I trying would to appreciate keep... that. So <laughs> if you look at this candle, what for one, this is a daily candle. So a few days ago, a couple of days ago, then the next day, mm -hmm. then the next day. These are all candles where if you know Japanese candlestick patterns, they're called what's called the doji candles. Okay. D-O-J-I. Okay, not, doji not simply, Doge like in Dogecoin. Okay, yeah, D O G. Yeah, not like Doge. It's Doji. <laughs> doji. Okay, and Doji simply means indecision, indecision. Okay. Huh. Now, also a Doji happens, meaning if the buyers and sellers are equal in strength, right? That's why you get a candle that looks like this, where it opens mm. higher, goes lower, but ends in the middle. Ends in the middle, ends in the middle, right? Or, or, or at the end of the day, you, know, you might have another kind of a hammer candle. So these are all things mm. that's pointing to us that the previous support level is where this doji is happening. Do you see this, right? Yeah. That's telling us that's a major support area and silver doesn't want to breach it. Where is that? It's also going to tell us- 23 or 20, what is that at roughly? Around 2280 or so. Okay. Right. Okay. That was the because every time it goes there, it comes mm. back, it goes there, it comes back. But usually it'll be a day or two. But the multiple, if you have multiple dojis towards the end or towards the bottom of a trend, because let's say this is a mini trend and it's been coming down. So towards the bottom of a mini trend, if you have multiple dojis, it, it means there's indecision. And then the, the sellers are losing steam. Buyers are coming in to defend that price. And now one of these days, it's just going to break the previous day's high mm -hmm. and then begin its new run. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. It shouldn't go much lower than this because the fundamentals don't support that. You see that? That's the difference. This is why when people say $18 silver, okay, anything's possible, <laughs> but the probability is for it to turn around and go higher. Especially remember, don't forget the roads being built on cutting rates, the potholes don't worry about. Okay. Um, All right. Okay. Okay. So we're, I just want to make sure we have time for Q and a at the end. Uh, and I do want to talk about retirement because again, I got that email th from someone who spoke to you and I could, I, I can sense that there is a lot of questions around that. So could you just summarize in like 30 seconds, what do you do, um, at, you know, Blackstone commodity group for people who are as confused as the person that was emailing me and talking with you about what to do with their rather significant retirement. They have an IRA. Uh, they're trying to do the right thing to protect themselves. And they know 2024 could be extremely volatile. What are you doing to help people? I think our first and most important goal is educating them. Okay. We want to educate our clients and prospective clients so they don't feel lost. They understand mm -hmm. what it is that they're working towards and why they have to go into this particular market or that particular market. Mm -hmm. And why are you allocating? We don't want you to feel like, you know, working with some other brokerage firms or financial advisors where they give you all kinds of complicated things and say, well, this is a 2050 portfolio. 2050, I don't care about 2050. I care about protecting what we have now and then taking advantage of whatever the market's going to give us. And with time, 
get rid of the opportunity cost, okay? Because I don't like the opportunity cost of holding something till 2050 or 2030, as, as these um, individuals say. So the yeah. first thing what we do is we educate you. We'll spend time with you so that you'll understand where you are right now. Like if you have a stock account, if you're in an IRA, if you're in a 401k, where are you right now? What's happened? And then we'll figure out where, where do you want to get to and how do you get there? But this time, understanding the steps. That's important to us. You know, this was a major shift in policy that we did in 2008 when everything was crashing. And then people would call us over and over again saying, hey, my broker doesn't pick up the phone for eight days. You know, they could be in these major brokerage firms and they just didn't understand what was going on. Right. And what we said was, hey, we're going to spend the time, the money, and create a culture of education. So that's why we do all these shows. Excellent. Um, yeah, and it's important that I also clarify, too, because th this hits home for me. Um, I came a, a pretty hard stacker in uh, gold in uh, 2009, really got into silver in, in 2018. It was a, kind of a Johnny come lately with silver. And as a stacker, you know our mantra, Mukarm. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. It's very important for me to have the physical. This, I'm not just playing with this stuff. <laughs> I need it here in my own vault, in my own uh, secured location with security and all that kind of stuff, right? It's very important. I don't like the idea of somebody else holding my medals. And I, and I, and I staunchly believe this, right? However, and I run into this a lot with other people. They say that, just like me, and then they've got some... Massive amount of IRA or retirement stuff stuck in, an, in a bunch of index funds and I'm exposed or I don't really feel comfortable with it. But obviously I cannot say, well, you know what? I'm just going to sell all that, take all my money out, take all my you know penalties or whatever it is, and then just go buy pressure metal. I think that's kind of a bad idea. Um, but I was like, what do I do? Because I you know, obviously I put money aside in a dollar cost average and I have goals and I stack physically and I building up that, that level uh, in my portfolio, but I still have money locked up for retirement. Now I'm getting close to the 59 and a half uh, age, but you know, it's, it was sort of like a, a light bulb going off. You know, I, I need to have metals, even if it's in an IRA and I, even if I can't have it physically yet, although I will want it as fast as I can, as soon as I can without penalty, it was a better move. And I think people are, are waking up to that, that dichotomy, right? You can actually be a stacker and focus on precious metals in your possession while at the same time, protect yourself in your retirement, anything you've built up over time in a way that isn't just exposed. It's not you know, consistent with your, 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 your investment philosophy. Yeah. I think that leads us when you ask the question, what do you do for your clients? Yes. That's yeah. the next thing we do. Like okay. after we educate you, we help you protect your retirement funds with alternative assets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not just because we love alternative assets. It's because the fundamentals nowadays support alternative assets right they really and do and secondly yeah. significantly significant and they so have for me and they have for me in other ways too i mean i do real estate property real tangible assets mukarm i could seriously drive about 5 miles away from where i'm sitting right now and i can show you the property touch them physically that i am invested in that to me is so important real tangible assets so commodities Right? Especially I, yeah. that's what will give you alternative assets, not just yeah. the market. It's like it right. gives you your financial independence over mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. because of, you've seen the mess. Like it's been 15 years of horrible fiscal policy. Just and, and you can you can just see it where even different administrations, they just have to um figure out ways to continue the horrible fiscal decisions. And now it's our time to take control of our financial destiny, right? It's actually 10 years ago is when you had like, you should abandon this philosophy of, well, buy and hold for that. Like, you, you have to be very nimble with your money. Mm -hmm. You you know, you, you can move. By the way, guys, you can move money from your retirement account 
If you have an IRA, yeah, why don't you explain you can this? Move money yeah. Yeah. from that IRA into a self-directed IRA. We'll help you with this. We'll hold your hand. We'll do everything for you. You can move it into a self-directed IRA, no taxes, no penalties. If you have an IRA, mm -hmm. just remember there's, there's no issues. Okay. You transfer those funds. We'll help you with the paperwork. We'll establish a self-directed IRA for you. Then inside of that self-directed IRA, you can own treasure, treasure, gold, American Eagles, silver, American Eagles, you know, British, um, uh, uh, I mean, the Britannias, the Britannias or, yeah, Kangaroo, the, main, yeah. the yeah. main ones, right? Yes. No premium coins, no collectible coins, none of that nonsense. You can own the own treasure that increases in value over time that either you can take advantage of it because the dollar's dropping or, or, or we're coming into this commodity super cycle, right? Or interest rates are going down, all of the reasons supporting it, or you can pass it on. To your kids, you can put them on a beneficiary mm -hmm. and you can actually pass on assets to your children or to your family members instead of giving them paper that may go bankrupt sometimes. You know, stock companies go bankrupt. You know, a dollar goes significantly low. And I'm not saying don't invest in the stock market. I'm just saying that the math has changed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not the 1980s when you didn't understand how to invest in gold or you didn't know why, what happened with the Hunt brothers and what, you know, all those things. Nowadays, you can take control of your financial destiny and protect mm -hmm. your retirement accounts. Now, I just want to mention something here. If you have an IRA, there's no age limitations. There's no age restrictions. There's no money. If you have a million dollars in an IRA, you can transfer it to a self-directed IRA, purchase gold and silver with it, protect it and grow it, God willing, right? Mm -hmm. Potentially. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a 401k, if you are older than 59 and a half, you are qualified to do what's called an in-service rollover. Do not let your employer or your plan administrator let you <laughs> fear monger you into thinking you have to stay in the stock market as it's coming down or as the dollar is losing value or as we're cutting interest rates. You can actually call them up. We'll help you with this as well. And our team where you can find out how much are you qualified to move? Because when you turn 59 and a half, you can move a significant portion of your money in your 401k without taxes, without penalties into a self-directed IRA and buy physical gold with it. Now, I also had another qualifying event too. I changed jobs and I yeah. didn't just roll it over too. I was so glad I had read this. This was before I met you. And I realized, oh my word, all that money I had put in and my employer had put into my 401k, I could roll that over to a self-directed IRA and put it into alternative And then take assets. control of it. Yes. Right? I like felt you can control so it, much more in control. Gold, silver, real estate. It was just so important to me. And I've been doing that for 15 years now. So it, it is viable. It's important to, to exactly. know Exactly. Anytime you sever your relationship with an existing company yep. and you move to another company, your 401k now is fully qualified to be moved over. Right. It's not just an in-service rollover amount. Everything you have from your previous employer can be moved into a self-directed IRA. Even if you have those funds in a current existing 401k, mm -hmm. the previous employer funds are all qualified, tax-free, penalty-free to be moved into a self-directed IRA and then by physical methods. You know, I think there's going to be a lot of Q&As around this one, some yeah. questions. I think people are going to be asking about silver and gold. If you're interested in asking a question... Okay, we're going to be opening that a little bit in just one, just like a minute, because I want to have something fun. I want to do something fun with McCarm. But you do need to be a member, at least a Patriot Pistol member, to get your questions in. That's coming up in just a minute. McCarm, on the 28th of December, I do this for fun. I, I'm not a fiduciary. Okay, I don't, you know, I'm not like you, because I know you don't like to do predictions. I like <laughs> to do them for fun. And so, on the 28th of December, just like I did a year in December before, I, I gave my prediction during the live stream of what I think gold and silver price will be at the end of this year. Do you want know to what, know what my guesses were? What? What were your guesses? <laughs> and again, it's just, it's just a guess. And I was really close, by the way, uh, for my prior guess, my prior prediction. I was so close. I said $2,000 in gold by the end of 2023, and I said $25 in silver by the end of 2023. I was close. It broke 25. I was like, oh, I'm going to be right. And of course, at you know, the end of the year. Um, but my prediction for the end of this year, $2,200 in gold for gold per ounce and $28 an ounce 
for okay. silver. Okay, so those are my predictions. And then on January 6th, AI came out with their predictions. You want to know? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's All right. This is just AI. for fun, guys. Look Great at this. Friend AI. Look at this AI, right? Chat GBT. AI predicts silver price at the end of 2024. So both uh, Chat GPT as well as Open, uh, I'm sorry, as well as Google Bard. All right. So Chat GBT thought it would be, if a, on a bullish, with a bullish mindset, 30 to 35. I mean, it's so wide range here. They, I just want one number, but they said 30, 35. And then, you know, on the bearish side, 18 to 20. So, you know, my, mine's, you know, somewhere in between there, right? It said 28. So it's in between the 30 and the 20. So that was interesting. I think Bard said, uh, Bard predicted silver could reach, look at this, 2780 to 34. I'm on the, just in there, in that range, 28. And gold, uh, same thing, AI predictions. <laughs> this is so silly. Oh, man. All right, here it is. Uh, there was chat GBT, gold range, 2250 to 2350. That's a, bear, a bullish. And then 1900 to 2000. So again, my 22 is on the low end of the bullish range. And then Google Bard said 2075. Uh, and then yeah, gold maybe maybe as twenty twenty and twenty. So, anyways, it was just f kind of fun to see that after I had made my predictions. It's kind of interesting. I didn't want ChatGPT or any of these uh, AIs to out, out like guess AI, ChatGPT, and, <laughs> and is it Google Bard? Bard? Google Bard, yeah. They all went into a bar, and you know how that goes. You know that's probably how it sounds like too. I know, right? <laughs> if you if you just look at the ranges, I mean, I get it. Is it. Silly. Uh, you know, but um, <laughs> hey, because yeah. it's easy to say, mm -hmm. um, you know, high 20s and mid 30s is very easy to come up with that because it looks right. like that. But I do like what you said about the numbers. And for the folks, you know, I don't do this all often. I'm not going to give predictions. I don't do that. Okay. I know you don't. But, that's why I do yeah. it for you, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's why <laughs> we have to just go for fun, through. right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're handling, and and you're you handling money. I'm just some dude. Friends. I'm just some dude on YouTube, right? So I can get away with it. You're actually handling money for people. Yeah. So you got to be careful. <laughs> and you have three friends like AI and ChatGPT uh, now. So, okay. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. So let's do this. Okay. Um, Here's, I think, I, I love that you brought it up, even though it's, it's, it's like a nice, fun segment. I think it's important for people to understand because we're going into an uptrending market right? Mm -hmm. Barring any major catastrophes, right? You are looking at a probability of an uptrending market. Mm. It's now important for people to kind of get an idea of where these markets could realistically go, right? Because if you have this latent trauma that we've talked about, mm. you're going to have self-doubt. You're going to think, oh, it's going to 2300. Now I'm going to come back to 1700. You know, I, so I think that's why I love the segment. I love what you talked about. And especially your predictions. Because here's what you have to understand. If we're going into a year where we're transitioning into a loose monetary policy situation, right? Mm -hmm. And then again, we're going into an entirely different dimension when it comes to interest rates. I don't care if it's two. I don't care if it's three. Mm -hmm. Whatever interest rate cuts. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that it's going to propel any market that's inversely correlated to the dollar, okay? And because of that, there are some numbers that become a reality now in this, in this uptrend. 2,500, 2,700, $3,000 gold oh, is realistic. Wow. Okay. It's realistic. Mm. I mean, look, just six months ago, gold wouldn't go $50 up in a day. Now it's doing it consistently. It might go $35, $40 up, $50 up in a day, $60 up in a day. So get ready, okay? I'm not saying by the end of the year we'll be at three grand, but what I am saying is get ready for the high to mid 2000s, wow. okay? Now, Silver, this would be the year because of the fundamentals aligning, right? This would be the year that I would expect Silver to close over $30 an ounce. Okay, whether it goes to 35 or 37, or I don't care, but it will close over $30 an ounce. And anyone who's followed our show together for the last year <laughs> knows that our biggest technical indicator 
is silver closing over thirty dollars an ounce and staying there? Right, holding. Yeah, that. if right. it if it holds there, hmm. then we know it can go up significantly, and that catapult effect will come. That's one of the reasons why you know, depending on the amounts that you transfer from your IRA into a self-directed IRA, sometimes we would purchase significantly more silver than gold because we want to take advantage of that. So, and I, and I saw in uh, the chat, which by the way, I'm oh, I'm ready to click members only for Q&A any second now, but I did see one question before I do, and it's, so what if America goes to war with China? We were actually, LaRue, talking about the geopolitical impacts. Mukaram, that would... That would be huge. Not that we want this. In fact, we absolutely do not want this because of the impact to everything, right? So especially lives. Uh, but that would be, sadly, incredibly bullish for metals. I think we're already in an economic war between the U.S. and China, you know, uh, through policies that were set even a year ago or two years ago. Um, and I think we're seeing that effect, like the economy in China, and right. then they're doing things, you know, in, in order to uh, counteract that, right? So, again, and I we don't look think... and we look weak. I'm sorry, I'm not going to get political here, but we look weak. We do, we do across the seas and in other countries and internally, our unity. It, we are in a weakened state, so I would not be surprised at all to see that happen. Let's pray it doesn't. Okay, guys, yeah. I'm switching over to members only for the Q&A. This is a fun section. Even if you can't question it, you just watch them because they're really good questions, I'm sure, coming. If you've got a question in the chat, all, all whatever you put in there, uh, we're actually, you can see them too now, too, Makarim, right? Mm -hmm. You're good? Good. All right. Yeah. So all the questions. Thank you, my silver journey. <laughs> Oh man, I know. And if you if you got a question, make sure it has a question mark at the end. So I see drop into Mike saying US can't really default. You know, in fact, that's interesting. Right now we're just paying the interest barely on the on our debt. We can't pay the principal off. So Mukaram, if I had credit cards after credit cards and I needed more credit cards to open up so I could pay off the interest on the other credit cards that I had, now I can't print money, but that I would be, I'd be bankrupt. Yeah, I mean that's an interesting <laughs> question. But you gotta you gotta look at it in terms of the kind of the world view, right. and then kind of where we stand as a country. Uh, which you know, even if you go back to the Plaza Accord in, in the nineteen eighties, where the the U.S. dollar was made kind of the mm -hmm. major currency in the world. Um, I think here's interesting. You know, unlike countries like Argentina and a few other countries where they've actually defaulted, right? The yep. U.S. will not technically default okay but already any any attempts or like we've had this clown show for the last 12 years or so of debt ceilings and mm -hmm. government shutdowns all of those things cause us to look like we are going to default or we are defaulting and that's not good because if you are yeah, unless you we raise the debt ceiling and take on more debt it, and take on it, more debt. And take, take on, on more debt, debt. Like and more debt and more debt. Trillion, now we're at 30 trillion plus, right? 34. It's but, not sustainable. Yeah. But so, but here's what I mean by that. Don't look at the fact because there are some millennials and there are people, you know, even boomers. They they look at this, oh, we are not going to default mm -hmm. and then not protect themselves. But you have to understand that the country may not default as a definition of default. But you will suffer the consequences of all of that that happens during that period where we look like we're defaulting. Right. And all of your hard work for the last 30, 40 years will be affected by that. And that's where you have to be um, intelligent enough to fix that with the team. All right. So I'm not seeing any questions other than do they make gold rounds? Actually, they do. I've bought some in the past. You can buy gold rounds. But that leads me to a question to Mukarm. About IRAs, what is the best silver and gold and why? Why is it? Because usually, you know, I'll tell you right now, Mukarm, I, I have steered away from buying American Silver Eagles for a while. I mean, I, if I can get a great deal, especially in a private sale, I'll scoop up some. I just it's did it better now. Right. It's come down. The premiums have definitely come down. I, I've been buying rounds mostly at this point. But when, when it comes to your retirement, what what is a good target and why in an you know, IRA? 
I mean, with the type of metals, right? right? Yeah. So first, obviously, no collectible coins, no graded coins, none of that nonsense. You well, if you mean? had ever said that, I wouldn't be doing <laughs> that so, three yeah, metals yeah. with you. So thank and, you. And all of the reasons that are given to have that, right. it's all nonsense. Mm -hmm. You don't need it. Um, even if you think you believe it, you don't need it because you'll get the performance, way better performance, if you go with a coin from the coin of the realm. Like right? if you go with a gold eagle, silver eagles, do not worry about the spreads. Unless, maples, maples unless, too. yeah. Well, maples, yeah, gold maples, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, silver maples. Silver. Uh, yep. But the important thing to understand is if you if you know you're going to go with this group of coins, eagles, Britannias, kangaroos, maybe maples, right? Uh, because I, I sometimes I don't like the way they move. Like when gold goes up fifty, sixty, seventy dollars, maples don't move percentage wise as it. much. You're as looking the gold at it from the trade, but you're because, at not it just as a trade. trade. I'm oh. looking at increasing the portfolio value of oh. my client. Okay, I'd ra instead of looking at so you know being um, instead of thinking, oh, I'm going to spend a little less in the beginning, mm -hmm. so I get more coins, right? If you spend a little bit more in the beginning, you'll get the number that you'll get the correct coin that percentage wise will outperform the, the maples significantly down the road, you know. And here's another thing. When you work with professionals like us, it doesn't have to be always eagles, eagles, eagles. <laughs> we'll know a time when because of our network and and everyone that we're speaking to, we will we'll understand that at one time it might be better to go with gold grits, but mm -hmm. silver eagles. It might be better to wear gold kangaroos and silver. But bricks. you like government minted gold government and silver bullion. All right. How flexible is that? They How? move the closest okay. to the spot price of metal as they're moving and percentage wise, they get the most return. All right. So I see another one from drop. Actually, there's a few here. Um, Eagle Stacker. Actually, before I get to that one, drop into Mike. Can you choose what gold and silver you want for your USA-based IRA? And I think you answered yes. yes. How flexible is that? Do they work with you on it? Because I know some people have their own mindset of what to buy. Yeah, and, and I mean, I, they, yeah. it's just like anything else, right? right? I mean, you can have your own view of mm -hmm. what you want to have right. in your IRA. Right. And we can help you with it. Cool. But if you want our recommendation and you want to work together in order to build something significant, that's why our motto in the company, like learn, invest, succeed. That's right. what we say, learn, invest, succeed, right? Yep. Then that group effort of understanding what's worked going back 15 plus years now helps you. So you can have your own medal if you want, yeah. or you can choose a group that we might say, okay, at this time, because of what's going on, these medals make sense. I think most clients understand that and they follow that, you know? Eagle Stacker, I will be 59 and a half in March. Wow, nice. And have a significant 401k in government retirement. What would be a good percent of gold and silver to put in my IRA, into an IRA? Okay, so the first thing, before we talk about percentage of gold and silver there, I think the most important thing is when you have a government 401k, mm. things get a little bit uh, like complicated. So we need to find out. If <laughs> Why that's... am I not surprised? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because they'll find a way uh, to hold your money even after you're 59 and a half. Yep. Um, and I've seen this like with the U.S. Postal Service and, and different things like we've helped, you know, with thrift savings plans. and that. But usually what I'd like to know is if it's a 403B, if it's a 403A, uh, things like that. Right. So right. I think the best thing is to kind of understand what your 401k is right. and then figure out some of the restrictions there. And after that, based on the amount you can move, then easily we can figure out the gold to silver ratio. Okay. So reach us, reach reach out to us and we can kind of talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. The information is in the chat. It scrolls around, it's in the description. I know my mods have been helping out. Contact Mukaram, contact Mukaram uh, or, or your assistant. Awesome. You have some Yeah, I mean, you can contact crystal. me. Oh yeah, you've got great assistants. Um, yeah, you can contact me directly on my phone number at the office, which is 949-200-7047. Yep. If I'm trading, busy helping clients, if you leave a message, one of my assistants will reach out to you immediately. Then they'll schedule an appointment with me. I'll spend time with you. If you want to reach out via email, you can reach out you know, directly to Crystal. Uh, her email address is there. You can reach out to me, mm, which is Mukara Mojud, mm at blackstonecommodity.com. There's many ways. And then we also have a link, the Yankee tribe. If you click on that and put in the information, that'll come out as well. Yeah, I know? haven't pushed that much. But yeah, I, I kind of, I'm old school, dude. I, I love being able to call and actually have somebody answer 
and talk with you. And that is the one piece of feedback. Actually, I get multiple feedbacks, but that is one of the biggest pieces of feedback I get from everyone that's worked with you. You're very patient. You explain things very thoroughly. They love the interaction. Here's another question for you. Uh, Ghost watching Ace Tone. If I'm in my 30s and I have a 401k from a previous job, what are my precious metals options, if any? Anything, because if you, so there's some qualifying statements there. Mm -hmm. First, your age doesn't matter because you have a previous 401k. So you can move that into a self-directed IRA without any restrictions, no taxes, no penalties. Mm -hmm. Once you get there, you and I can figure out depending on how much you have. Like sometimes if you're younger, you don't have as much in your previous 401k, right? right? Or you never know, you might have worked in a tech job or something and you have quite a bit in there. It all comes down to what you have. Because once we know kind of what we have to work with, then we'll figure out based on the performance you want from that and based on what the markets are doing, should you have more silver than gold? Should you have you know, uh, equal amounts of gold? We will help you with all that, okay? Good. Um, actually, there's a question here I would like to answer with a link. I don't know if the mods can help me out on this or not, but give me one really quick moment here. Uh, get shareable link. All right. So the question is from Shiny Shinyman. Uh, by the way, thanks again to all my members. I really appreciate you. This is just one way I, I like to show my appreciation. But here it is. Question. Isn't some pre-33 gold prudent to have in case there is government confiscation? So this this is a really important question. I get this a lot. The whole yeah. concept of a gold and silver confiscation, by the way. But did you know that there was an executive order for a silver confiscation? Not just the gold one. You don't usually hear about that executive order. First of all, there's a whole legal ramification on whether or not an executive order really is law. But besides that, we need to understand what that gold confiscation was back in you know, 33, why it happened, and what the likelihood of it occurring today. Plus, yeah. would pre-33 really protect you from a hypothetical confiscation today? There's a whole bunch on confiscation. I'm going to put the link to my playlist dedicated to that topic. Why I think having a gold and silver confiscation is extremely unlikely in 21st century America. Why and how best to protect yourself? I think, personally, in a nutshell, here's, here's the spark notes. If there's ever going to be a confiscation, if the government ever goes all in on stealing our wealth, and I'm not saying that that's going to happen, but believe you me, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. They, they've done a lot that are horrible, a lot of horrible things. It's going to be with our digital wealth, guys. The Great Taking is a great book. I highly recommend you either read the book or watch the video, The Great Taking. The, the risk is not to this stuff in a vault in your house. It just, or, or, in the, or in the ground outside. And I really think that we need to understand why it was done in the past. Our, goal, our money was backed and, and, and redeemable in, in gold. And the reasons for it was to inflate our dollar, and they couldn't do it when it was tied, so they had to break it. And it really isn't the case anymore. People, I think the percentages are extremely low of actually how many people have this stuff. This used to be money in a very transactional way. It still is money, but back then, that was it. People had it in their pockets. They walked around with it. It was very common. So all the stuff I go into in that playlist, I highly recommend you watch those videos, and I think it will help you, Shiny. I appreciate the question. Um, that was just me. I wanted to jump in on that one. <laughs> yeah, and I, it's great information. And just to add, you know, all I, I, I just want to make sure because it's something that comes up over and over again. Especially with collectibles. this is why. Especially when you... with collectibles and IRAs. Right. Exactly. Especially IRAs, mm -hmm. especially with older clients, mm -hmm. right, um, who've, who've gone through some different situations in their life or with government institutions. I think the key thing to keep uh, understand here is when you hear that, mm -hmm. that's usually from just a gold salesperson. OK, that's what it is. When they <laughs> They're say trying that, to sell you high premium gold. 
Yeah, it's not people like us who are traders, who are individuals who've invested in the markets, who understand the markets, who have this goal of trying to help clients increase their net worth over right, time. Right. These are just goal salespeople who just don't understand anything else like Fibonacci sequences, trading, support, <laughs> resistance. They don't understand anything. They just want to sell you as much gold as possible and make as much money on a spread as much as possible. Yep. It's because they're trying to- You scare make... tactics. Yeah, it's a scare yeah. tactic. Mm -hmm. And and here's how we know this, okay? It's because, just like Yankee said, if you're going to confiscate physical gold, it's usually at a time where the country is having austerity measures or does not have money. So if they don't have money, they're not going to come to you and confiscate your pre-1933 gold and then have to melt it down, spend no. more money, no. and then make it into gold bars, right? There's this a is whole one of the bunch reasons. of reasons. And, and I, a, I just touched, a whole lot of reasons. I like touched he, on one. I think I had 15. So check those out. Yeah. Um, but I appreciate the question, though, Shiny. I really do. Uh, it's a good one. How about dropping to Mike again? Is there a minimum to work with you, Makarm, or a maximum? <laughs> I, I know some are 10K min, 10 million max. I mean, do you work with all kinds of people? I think the best way to answer that question is the minimum is based on what you want to accomplish. Okay. Mm. So if you reach out to me and then you tell me kind of what's going on mm. and what you want to accomplish with your, you know, financial future and, and your financial goals, mm -hmm. Then I'll give you an example, right? Let's say you have $500,000 in an IRA, but then you tell me, hey, Mukarram, I want to protect this money. And then in the next few years, I want to grow it, but I'm only willing to put $50,000 in the metals right now, right. which is one of the best trades you can have. That doesn't make any sense, okay? I'm going to help you understand why that doesn't make sense and then figure out what's the best composition for you. But if you call me and you say, hey, Mukarram, I have $20,000 to my name and I want to buy metals, then we'll figure out whether it's five grand or 10 grand that you should have in metals compared to someone else. So that's why I'm saying it all depends on what you have and what you want to accomplish. So reach out to us. We'll figure it out. 949 Designs, what areas are my best shelters and or investment areas? I mean, you talk about a commodity super cycle. I, I am, if I am investing, and I do, I do invest. Right now, I would say, 99% of everything that I am investing in to build wealth, not necessarily protect it like I look at gold and silver as a stacker, but to build it, it's all commodities. It's all tangible mm -hmm. stuff. I have a long yeah. list of stuff, and I mentioned it last time we had our mastering medals. But so answer your answer for yeah, you. Yeah, the first question, the first answer, the general answer would be alternative assets. Alternative okay? assets. When yep. you say why alternative assets, mm. because they are inversely correlated to the dollar. <laughs> and you're going into a right. fundamental situation where you know that they're going to cut rates. And they've said it. I'm not saying it. Yankee's not saying it. They said it, right? So if they're going to cut rates, I, and like I said, I don't care how many times, you want to be in assets that are inversely correlated to the dollar. Because that just makes sense. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you want to be in commodities because as that cutting of rates happen, guess what? Major commodity-centric economies around the world, like Australia, places like that, begin to prosper, right? When that happens across the world, guess what? There's more and more demand for commodities. So if you've positioned yourself correctly, you'll make a significant, potentially a significant amount, whether it's in your IRA or not. The other thing is, let's say if we kind of narrow it down, Here's how I look at where I go to when the big picture is given to me. I look at the one that hasn't moved the most, okay? Meaning, if you look at gold and silver, they are the ones right now that have not gone to, especially silver, a record high. Crude went to $140 a barrel already, you know, this last right, year. Right. So that's why I'm saying you have to look at the one that's been held back the most mm -hmm. or has not shown, has not gone up yet significantly, you want to follow that. You don't want to go to, for example, a, a market that, let's say, let's if there's a trace element or like a lithium or uranium, whatever, if it's gone up 2,000%, you don't want to chase it. You want to go into gold or silver because you know that's where you'll get the best return. All right. So I'm seeing 949. I, I, I might have messed up on the first question. What areas are my best shelter so i think i don't know if he's talking property there real estate you do well, real estate too good right point. yeah we do real estate as well yeah i do i do real estate that is yeah. my primary actually uh, growth vehicle 
and there's a there's a way to do real estate yep. whether it's a bear market or a bull market right we understand that mm -hmm. but you have to be selective when you're doing mm -hmm. that and there are types but of real estate in this particular cycle i believe real estate will come towards the latter part of this cycle okay wow. meaning you'll do these commodities first mm -hmm. make mm -hmm. money with them mm -hmm. then move that money into real estate when that time comes that's okay. how we'll approach well i do private mortgage lending for the last 15 years i've done it that is a very safe, not a sexy necessarily way of buying up, flipping, or doing other types of uh, renting uh, in that sort of real estate market. But with PML, I'm very happy with my uh, my eight eight percent APY every year, not worrying about the markets. I'll tell you, it's it's a great income stream. I have a whole playlist on it. If you're gonna want to go watch it, <laughs> it's on that too. Great that you mentioned that because yeah. you have to understand that. You know, all of this gold mm. that you're building inside IRAs mm -hmm. going to, God willing, become very profitable mm. during this cycle. And I think everyone should understand you can do real estate inside of your IRA. Oh, so when you that. sell out yes. of your gold, you yes. can go into real estate inside of your or IRA. Do we both. do that yep. for our clients. Yep. Oh, so good. that would be the next transition. So just think of nice. that as because in self-directed IRAs, because you don't have any capital gains and anything like that, right? You can continuously build your net worth oh, by going from one asset class to another. It's really nice. All right. So drop into Mike. A few things. One, uh, it just I'll just rip off a few. I think we physical goods owners will be okay, i.e. land and precious metals, including uranium. He says, I need more farmland to rent. He's saying, cup and handle. I have a bachelor's in international econ. Wow. Okay. And then he says, great answer. Thank you very much. And just to really reinforce it, he dropped a $2 super chat. Thank you for the great information. We'll drop in the mic. That's impressive. You got a lot of good uh, perspectives there. And I'm impressed with your qualifications there with the bachelor's. If you want to talk with McCarm, I think that would be profitable as well. Feel free to give him a call. Um, and then let's see, Tiger, can you comment on using, oh yeah, let's talk about um, depositories for a minute. Uh, you know, SD Bullion, Delaware Depository, there's a lot of good depositories out there and it is extremely important you find one that you can trust. Very yeah, I important. mean, Delaware Depository, you know, we work with them for mm -hmm. a significant period of time. SD Bullion, yep. also great depository, right? Yeah. I think the choice there becomes whether you want uh, segregated storage or non-segregated yep. storage. Because yep. if you want segregated storage, SD Bullion has some really good plans, right? Mm -hmm. and, and their rates are much better than some of the other segregated storage companies, right? I'm not talking about Delaware Depository, but some of the major right. other ones. But if you want storage that is not segregated and you want to have it in, in your IRA metals stored that way, then Delaware Depository offers a great choice. If you want to talk with McCarm about that, he has a lot of experience understanding the right things to look for in a depository. I There are a lot of things you do not want. It was in the news just the other day. You know, not, not just the other day. I was reading about it back in July. But... Some depository, one of them was, you know, taken to court and just a horrible, horrible, you know, uh, f case of fraud. You have to know where you're storing this stuff. And again, as a stacker, as soon as I'm 59 and a half, I want to take it. <laughs> I want it in my own vault. But you know what? I mean, it's a good temporary, at least a, 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 a temporary position. And that's something we, we didn't it. touch on. Uh, yeah. Right? yeah didn't. We wanted to mention that just because you put physical metals into an IRA, and then put it in a depository mm -hmm. does not mean that you can't take out the metals. You can take out all of the metals or right. a portion of the metals whenever you want by doing a distribution, what's called an asset in kind distribution, mm -hmm. meaning you can ask for the metals in lieu of the dollars, right? right? And all you have to understand at that time is when you do that distribution, there'll be taxes for that amount that gets added onto your income that year. Because yeah, they remember, have to take their with little bit. Yeah. An IRA, there's no capital gains. Okay. All right. I think we got time for, I'm sorry, 949, if I messed up. I appreciate your question, and I'm sorry. But Ghost Watching Ace Tone says, in California, do I have to use a depository, or can I personally hold when I convert my 401k to precious metals? Yeah. So here's the thing. I would never, ever recommend 
for you to personally hold your physical medals in the form of an IRA. Yep. There's always accounting issues that come with it. Yep. And in some cases, I don't even think that's that's it, properly it, regulated or it's even allowed. I know there are companies that do, you know, what they call home-based IRAs. I wouldn't take that option. Be very, at all. very, at all. very. In fact, no, don't be very careful. Don't do it. Do period. It. Don't do do it. not do it. The yeah. IRS has not taken people to court yet over this. I've watched some uh, pending, potential pending litigation, and you do not want to be a target. Do not, you cannot be your own custodian in your retirement account. Don't do it. No Just matter what they put pro the pro protocol yeah. on that. Say. And then we'll mm -hmm. show you ways where you can take that distribution of the metals, have it in yes. your hands, yes. but yeah. do it correctly so you don't have a tax nightmare down the road yeah. and also you don't have legal issues. Awesome. Wow. This has been great, Mukaram. Episode six has mm -hmm. been a, a wonderful episode. I think we've covered a lot of ground. I'm looking forward to episode seven next month. We do Mastering Metals every month with Mukarm. Again, the information for Mukarm is in the description, as well as rolling around in the chat. Uh, there's his number right there. I just saw it. My Silver Journey, thank you, my friend. My great mod has been putting it in there. Tuli Tuli, thank you. Uh, we had a really good time tonight. Any parting words know, before we wrap fun. it up? Pardon? Any parting words, last words before we wrap up? Yeah, I think the important thing is... Don't have latent trauma affect your planning for this year because yep. this year is going to be different from the last year and a half. So understand how to navigate that landscape and, and understand how to invest in a trending market. Mm. If you don't get those that sentence, call me. I'm going to help you. All right. And okay. I'm going to start calling you the golden silver whisperer, man. All right. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate it. All right. You're welcome. Have a Take good night. Care. Good night, everyone. Hope